Um, welcome to everyone. You are on our monthly series, uh, Cooking with Chef Carol. Today's series is Keeping Cool with Fruit Forward Recipes. Um, oh my God, what a time of year for fruit. Um, <laughs> let's see, my name is Wendy Sachs and I'm a member of the board for Plant Powered Metro New York. Plant Powered Metro New York empowers people to find better health and overcome chronic disease through whole food plant-based nutrition. Together with a wide network of grassroots leaders, organizers, and educators, we raise awareness about the dramatic health benefits of a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, with a food is medicine approach, we offer education, build supportive communities, and empower people to make lifestyle adjustments and organize and lead projects that spark changes, not only to their own lifestyle, but to food policy, practice, and culture. And at the end of the um, demo, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit more about upcoming events with, um, with Plant Power Metro New York. So today, welcome to Cooking with Chef Carol. We're exploring the delicious world of plant-based cooking and baking without added oil, salt, and sugar. Um, Carol will walk us through keeping cool with fruit forward recipes <laughs> to keep us inspired for these hot summer days. Um, so as usual, please keep yourselves muted. Let us know if you'd like where you're from in the chat. Um, please ask your questions in the chat and um, if, we are, have time in between. Carol will let me know when she can take questions. If not, we're reserving about 15 minutes at the end of the show um, for me to run through the questions and be able to ask her directly. And in the meantime, I'll be answering as many questions as I can. Um, so definitely put them in. I'll keep track and I'll answer what I can. So today, you mm -hmm. probably have seen from the recipes, um, we are going to, Carol's cooking with a couple of fun ingredients. And in our did you know section of this show, did you know that the citrulline in watermelon, which Karen will, Carol will be using, may also reduce muscle soreness after exercise. Um, at a tip, watermelon and beets are particularly good for restoring energy quickly after workouts. And also, did you know, pistachio nuts have the highest plant sterile content of all nuts. And in China, they're known as the happy nut because the mm -hmm. openings make them look like the nut is smiling. And um, if Carol I know is referencing a book, which she'll tell you about later, but in that book, um, uh, Dr. Furman also mentions how eating um, pistachio nuts can help men in particular with erectile dysfunction and um, blood flow and cholesterol levels. There was a study done on men. It's probably helping women as well. So um, on that delightful note, um, Carol, what's on the menu today? Hey, thanks, Wendy. Thank you so much for introducing some of our some of the things that we're going to be making. I'm very excited about today's show um, because um, we are making four different things. Um, we're going to bake plantains. We're going to actually make watermelon and tomato gazpacho. We are also going to make a jicama salad. And then we're going to make a pistachio gelato. So I'm very excited about all these things. Why? One, because they're all cool and we have to keep ourselves cool. And then we also, why I'm excited because I want to introduce some things to you that maybe you don't know about, you know? I always want to play a game like, do you know what to do with this kind of thing? Um, and that's, you know, when you're walking around the farmer's market or you suddenly get a big vegetable box and you're like, what is this? You know, what do I do with it? So today we're going to be talking about jicama, which I'm very excited about. This is a jicama. So that we're going to make a jicama salad. And the very first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to talk about plantains. And it's a very simple thing. Plantains are actually known as the baking banana. Okay. And, and they come when you get them in the store, they are usually yellow. Sometimes they have a few brown spots on them. And then over time, this is a banana that you actually want to get as ripe as possible. You can definitely cook them when they're green. Um, 
Uh, they are very, plantains are used a lot in African dishes, Caribbean dishes, and, um, you know, different kinds of curries. And recently I made myself a Colorado chili and I used the green plantains. I didn't use the really ripe ones. I use them when they're green. But for today's dish, we actually want them very ripe. Okay, so um, you can see that he, this is kind of how it starts out. And this is ready to use, but I usually let it go a little further. I bought all of, a, bunch, a bunch of them at one time. And what the very first thing that you want to do is you want to just cut off their uh, top, their little, their little ends, okay? And I've got the oven actually preheated. The reason we're gonna make these um, ahead of time is because they need like a 30 minutes or so to cook, okay? So we're just getting this little recipe just out of it, so we're out of the way. So we've cut the ends off, right? And let's do both of them. Let's just cut both of them. Now, most of the time I learned about uh, uh, plantains from my Venezuelan friend. And of course, when I learned many, many, many years ago, she would fry them up. And that's kind of a normal thing. You fry up the plantains. And are those good for you? Not really, right? <laughs> you know, it's always like, it's just, it's kind of like uh, the, the potato, right? You like, the potato is good for you, but it's what you put on top of the potato that's not so good for you, right? So you have to be conscious of these things. So the plantain is actually very similar uh, to a potato. And um, the, it's rich in vitamin A, rich in vitamin C. So what I've just done is I've just scored it and you can see I'm just peeling it, okay? I'm just getting it peeled. And sometimes the skin actually does still want to kind of cling to the plantain, okay? And I'm just getting this all clean here. So that was the one that wasn't as black. And as you know, I always have a bowl to put all my garbage on so that all garbage goes into one thing. And let's get this other one scored and so that we can get it into the oven. Okay, and this one, this one is super, super ripe, super ripe, okay? And it's gonna be a little softer, a little more mushier, but what is good about it being so ripe is that it's, um, it's gonna be much sweeter, okay? And you can see, I just want you to see how when I'm peel it, peeling this. Now you can actually bake a plantain inside of its skin. You don't have to necessarily. And my friend uh, also has baked a plantain in a microwave, believe it or not. Um, so lots of possibilities here, right? But we're gonna bake it. And I'm just gonna cut this so that it's on an angle, okay? So I'm holding my knife at an angle and I just want them to be pieces that are at a, a somewhat of an angle and a half an inch thick. So you can see what that's looking like. Okay, and we're just gonna get all these lined up, okay? And we're gonna get them in the 400 degree oven. And I'm sure someone's gonna ask me, could we make chips? And I'm positive that you could definitely make chips like this. You're just gonna wanna not cut them a half an inch thick and you're gonna wanna cut them very thin and lay them you know, on a big sheet pan spread apart so that they can really dry out you know, in the oven. But again, the whole reason for showing this is to show you that you can actually eat a plantain and not eat all that oil. Okay, so I'm just again lining everything up. Everything looks pretty good here. And let's see what, and this is the last piece. So I'm just gonna put it on the tray, okay? And we've got a tray like this, okay? So this is now going into the hot 400 degree oven. It's gonna take anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes. We'll watch them carefully. Um, you could flip them over if you choose, I don't bother because I'm lazy. So let's just get these in the oven. Now in your recipe, I just tell you how to bake the bed plantains, but I knew all of you would say, what do I do with it? What do I do with it after I have this plantain? So I actually have a tray here. I just wanna show you what they look like when they're all baked, okay? And they are so delicious just to snack on. But think of them again like a potato, right? And what do you normally eat with a potato? You usually eat some kind of greens. Maybe you would eat some kind of other vegetable with on the side. So one of my very favorite ways, and of course, plantains are also commonly eaten with rice and beans, right? So plantains, rice and beans is the most common I would say Caribbean way of eating the plantains, but 
you always want to get your greens in there, right? Somehow you want to just force them in there. Even if you're not wanting to, you just have to get them in there. So I thought that I would just show you very, very quickly. And again, this is not in your recipe. I just, in your recipe that you will have, it's just how to bake a plantain. And then you could serve it any way you want. And honestly, I just finished some bean dip that I had in the refrigerator that was made with black bean salsa mm. and cumin. That's all the black bean dip. And I literally literally thought, oh, why did I finish that black bean dip without putting it on top of the plantain? Like, how delicious would that be as a little appetizer when you would make all these plantains ahead of time, put a little black bean spread on, put a toothpick in, and then you've got a nice, beautiful appetizer, maybe even a slice of tomato on the top, right? So, and then everyone picks up that as an appetizer. So that's one idea. And my second idea is going to be showing you about the uh, what how I like to serve it. So, and the reason I'm also able to show you is because I actually have a gazillion beet greens that came from one bunch of beets, okay? And remember I said the plantain is like a potato. So potatoes go really well with uh, green is spinach. Usually I love potatoes and spinach. It's my favorite. So when I think about spinach, I always try to substitute out these um, lovely, yummy, yummy, yummy things. Okay. I've washed these numerous times because they carry a lot of sand. Okay. So you really want to think about it like spinach. Okay. And a lot of people get rid of this. Okay. And I always tell you beets that are like a two for one vegetable. You get beets and then you get the greens. Okay. So you're just going to just chop these up. Okay, and I actually have a burner um, to the left of me that I put on. You can use these stems, okay? They're good, they're gonna cook, okay? And they're gonna cook up. So I would cut these. They don't have to, I'm just rough chopping everything here. Now, if you want, you could put garlic. You don't have to put garlic, but you can. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this bowl. And I actually have a little bit of onion here to tell you the truth, just a little bit left over from when we're prepping for the gazpacho. So I'm actually going to just cut this onion just a little bit, okay? Just a few, not, and I'm not even gonna bother with putting garlic because often when I cook spinach, I cook it with a little bit of garlic. But let's bring this a little forward, okay? And we wanna see if the pan is hot. I can tell that it's starting to get hot, not quite hot yet. We find a little water. Ah, yes, we have heat and we have steam and we have sizzling bubbles that are growing, just dancing across the, the skillet here. And we are going to start by just putting in, I'm gonna be, again, this is really rough. Nothing is really fussed over here, okay? We're just putting some um, onions in here. And I'm gonna get a little bit of water, right? And I'm gonna water saute these. Again, we're not using any oil. Okay, that's cooking. You can see the steam. I'm gonna get a spatula. Again, if you want, you could definitely put any kind of um, white onion, yellow onion, leeks. Just, and again, I'm not gonna do any garlic. The onion's just here for a little bit of flavoring. And this is a non fuss dinner, okay? This is really, this is, I'm doing this fast so you understand that you can make something really healthy and fast. And this is kind of how I eat often when I'm just like, don't want to spend very much time. Okay, so this, all of this, you can see how much, this is probably, let's say one, two, probably three cups of greens, okay? I'm just kind of portioning it out here, seeing that once these beets were three portions, okay? So I'm gonna put this in now, and it has a little water on it, okay? All of this is going in, okay? My very, very favorite thing to eat, okay? Now, I just thought right spontaneously while I'm talking to you, like wouldn't it be nice to just flavor it with a little bit of orange? And I have a little, we have a little bit of orange here. So I'm just gonna give it just a little bit, right? Just a little bit of zest. Not much, okay? That's gonna help our flavor, okay? And we'll leave that zester over here. And we're just gonna get this all cooking. Now it's gonna just take a very few minutes. I've not added any more water or, you know, if you had broth, you could use broth to saute. Now, if I could just show you, this is so pretty. I mean, you can see it right on the burner, but I mean, is anything more beautiful? Because what happens, with the red onions, they're kind of brightening up in red. 
and the beets stems are getting brighter. They're getting pink actually, as this is cooking, okay? And this is how we're gonna serve the plantains. Again, it's not in the recipe. You don't need a recipe for cooking beet greens, just like you don't need a recipe for cooking, just sauteing greens. Do you wanna do it with red chard? Of course you could do it with red chard. Could you do it with spinach? Yes. Do it with kale? Of course. But I love the sweetness. The, the two go together really nice. The sweetness of the plantains and the, the, the beet green is a little thicker and a little uh, denser. And there's a, just a really nice texture that I really, really like. Okay, if, and we could put a little bit of uh, black pepper and I have that black pepper here. We can just add a little bit just for some flavor. If you want, you could squeeze a lemon or a lime. That would be also good. Okay. Again, I have this one is thing is sloppy for me. Does someone have a question? No, maybe I just heard some. Rest is all chill. Um, whoever is speaking, please uh, mute yourselves. We're recording. Carol, there is one question, but I don't know if you want the interruption at the moment. Carol, you're muted. You're muted, Carol. Uh, let's see, let me write to Jim. Hold on, somebody, we're having a- I muted it. I muted oh, God. it. Um, no, I've got it. Okay, I'm shutting her down. No, never mind. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. Um, there's a You're not, believe me, nothing, you know? I'm like a reformed alcoholic. Whoever is speaking, could you kindly mute yourself? Thank you. Okay, Carol Levy, you're muted. So if you can unmute. But okay, I think we should be okay. We last uh, left off with um, a little orange on the uh, greens. Yes, and now the greens are looking like this. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, got it? Got it. Okay. So you can hear me, correct, Wendy? And do you want a quick question or you want to wait till- I can listen to you, I'm, I'm, I, you can go ahead. Okay, great. So the question, um, what well, two questions actually, that uh, do you, you, you don't need to use a cover to steam the greens? No, nope, you don't need a cover. Great. And, if, and what else? And if you wanted to, one could, correct? Of course. Okay. And does the citrus or vinegar turn the greens dull? Mm, no, it does not. It would just flavor them. But the red onions are really pretty because they've turned pink. I don't know if anyone can see all of that here, but I'm just going to show you that here's a big plate of, of, of everyone can see that, right? It's just beautiful. And it's got those nice onions. The onions look pink. Right, they look pink. You can see how pretty they are actually. Okay, so this is the plate full of greens. I actually have a few beets because I put, I had, I have them. I just happen to have them, right? So I'm just gonna put a very few beets on top here. Not a lot, because we have all the greens and it's all about the greens, right? And then of course, we've got the plantains, right? So I'm gonna just put the plantains and this is a really nice vegetable, right? To serve and you get your greens, you get a starch and I don't know, we could just pile these up here in the middle, right? We always wanna make it as pretty as possible, right? And now that's a little end. I'm gonna to try to work in all these. I'm just kind of piling them. This is two plantains that are going on with this very gigantic platter. This is probably enough food for four, maybe three people. Depends on how hungry your eaters are, right? And let's see, let's get this one in there. And I don't know, somewhere this has to go. Let's, let's put that in there. Okay, so that is our dish with plantains, beets, and beet greens. Okay, do you see how fast that is? Gorgeous. 
Okay, everyone sees that. We're gonna move on to the next thing. Um, there are no more questions about plantains. Nope, I think uh, none more that came in. Oh, um, yeah, so there's somebody asking about um, microwave recipes, but uh, we're pretty much, um, uh, it's not that people here don't use microwaves, it's just at the moment we're working with Whole Foods and kind of doing the purest um, form of cooking, so no microwave. And honestly, uh, a microwave to me, I, I don't cook very many things in a microwave anyway. I, it's good for warming up food, defrosting food, uh, reheating rice, uh, maybe warming up a slice of apple pie, but in general, I don't know how much cooking actually goes on in a microwave, right? So <laughs> that's, my, that's my own personal opinion. So let's move on. Let's go on to the next thing because we have a lot of things. And as usual, I try to cram as many things in to a one hour and 15 minute show so that we learn as much as possible. So these are looking so delicious. I don't know how I'm not going to eat this while it's sitting in front of me, but let's move on, okay? So we are going to need some kind of blender. I'm going to use a Vitamix and we're going to make the watermelon gazpacho, okay? Now, one thing that I have to tell you is when you're buying fruit, right? Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get inside, right? You buy the cantaloupe and maybe it's not as sweet as you intended. You buy the peach and it's clinging to the pit and you can't get it off and you wonder, gosh, it looks good on the outside, but it's not a very good peach. Sometimes Often, it is a mystery of what you're gonna get inside. So I wanna tell you today, when I got my watermelon, it was a huge disappointment, huge. And I don't know, uh, I had a really great watermelon last week and the week before, so I'm not sure why this particular watermelon was a dis is, is a disappointment, um, but it was very light in color when I cut it open, kind of like the shade of my apron, as you can see. You want a watermelon that's big, bright, and red inside, um, preferably seedless if you can, so that you don't have to pick out the seeds. And this one not only was light and red, but had yellow streaks running through it. So it just told me that it wasn't really a ripe one, okay? But I really have to like accept that it's not the most perfect watermelon and I have to just cook it. You know, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and move forward because I don't wanna waste it. And I don't wanna just go buy another watermelon and, and not use what I already have. So I might have to make some adjustments just because the watermelon isn't bright red and it's just not as sweet as I intended. So. We have a lot of different things that are gonna go into this and we're gonna have to do it in two batches because I don't have a gigantic Vitamix. I have a smaller, shorter, squatter one. And so I'm gonna put in half of the watermelon, okay? And then we need to have, besides the watermelon, we need two whole tomatoes, okay? So the tomatoes I have are just here and I already squeezed out the seeds of one of them and I just wanted, I left, I cut this tomato in half and then to cut out, to get rid of the seeds, you actually just squeeze it out, okay? And that gives you just the meaty, fleshy part of the tomato. And this one doesn't have very many seeds, okay? Not, and of course, you're not gonna throw out that the seeds, right? You're gonna, I'm gonna actually put that extra bit of seeds and juice in for my, um, uh, broth when I make it. But I'm just going to tear up one of these tomatoes. Okay, I'm not even bothering to cut it up. Okay, so that's going in there. And again, we just talked about that I'm going to have to make two batches. So I'm going to put one of the tomatoes in with the leftover watermelon. Okay, and you can see, let me just show you that here are the seeds. Okay, and that's just going to go right into my big bucket where I have all my extra stock things. But for now, that's just going to go over here. Okay, and this tomato, I just want to tear it up a little bit so that it gets, so when we're making our second batch, okay, and then we need to go into the um, blender is we need a, bit, a half a cup of cucumbers, okay, and I just cut them roughly. I did not make them pretty. I don't care what size they are. They're just small, somewhat small diced, okay, and those are going to go in there. Okay, now I could put all of them in. The soup is all going to get mixed up. So it doesn't matter if I do half and half. Okay, I'm just going to be careful at how much I fill this. And let's put a few of those in there. 
right? And then we're gonna need some onions. I have about a quarter cup of chopped red onions, okay? So they're gonna go in there as well. We can put a few onions in here too, doesn't matter. Really, none of this matters, okay? Um, what I think is one of the secret weapons of this recipe that I love so much is cumin seeds, okay? Cumin seeds are so um, delicious. I um, roasted them in a, in a saute pan. In a saute pan, I took a teaspoon of cumin seeds and I put them in the pan. And as soon as they started getting light brown and fragrant, I took them out and I roasted them. Now you're gonna say, do I need to roast them? I wanna say, if you want added flavor, you're gonna roast them, okay? And I know you're gonna say, do I need to have cumin seeds? Can I just use cumin? Well, of course you can just use cumin, but I'm gonna tell you that you better have cumin seeds in your pantry, okay? That's like not having smoked paprika or something. Like it is an essential, essential ingredient as far as I can see <laughs> uh, for cooking and cumin seeds are really different than, yes, if we grind these, they'll become a powder, but Cumin seeds give it a very specific taste and I could not live without them. So I'm asking you to not substitute and really go for it, okay? So these are going in, all of them, right? Okay, the other things that need to go in are a half a jalapeno, which is right here, and then two cloves of garlic, okay? So I need to get these garlics out of their little shells here. So I'm gonna push down here and get those out. Okay, we're just gonna get rid of that. Now, this afternoon, when I was thinking about how disappointed I was in my watermelon, I remembered one great tip. And this tip came to me because I used to work with an Israeli chef a long time ago in Berkeley. And he did a lot of fun things, things that I never had heard of and I learned a lot from him actually. And I remembered that in his gazpacho soup, if he wanted to make it redder, he would use a little beets. <laughs> he would actually put beets, which kind of makes total sense because don't we all eat borscht, right? A lot of us eat borscht and it's cold soup. So before I cooked my beets this afternoon, I left one behind, okay? I actually um, had trimmed it a little bit, but I'm actually gonna put, um, again, this is just a little extra tip. It's not in the recipe. This is not peeled. This is not cooked, okay? And I'm literally gonna hope that this possibly could help my not so beautiful, not so red watermelon, okay? And I'm just gonna put a few, maybe a little bit more, right? It's not cooked, it's going to all get blended. It's going to help make the soup red and give it a little flavor, okay? And thank goodness I remembered that little tip because my watermelon felt disappointed. Okay, so I'm coming over here to the Vitamix, okay? Um, I'm gonna put the lid on, okay? And get that going. And we're going to make this so it's pretty smooth, okay? But it's up to you on the texture, okay? You can make it totally smooth or you could leave it with a little bit of texture, okay? So let's just get that going. Okay, that's probably enough. Okay, let's just see how this looks. And I'm going to bring it closer to you. Mm, it already smells good. I can smell the cumin. And we didn't put the we didn't put the jalapeno yet. So let's just finish that. So here is the soup. Okay. And again, we're making two batches. We'll put our jalapeno into this batch. We only need a half. Okay, so let's just move this. We have a very crowded area here. Okay, so I wanted to let this hole for you so you could see what do I do when I cut it in half. So again, you wanna be very, very careful when you're cutting this, okay? We're only gonna use half and you can do this several different ways, okay? You can wear a plastic glove, you can wear a sandwich bag over your hand if you're, if you're wanting to be super, super careful. You never really want to take your seeds out with your thumb or your nail or anything because all of that spice is going to get in here. And if you touch your eyes, touch any open wound, touch your lips, touch your nose, you are going to just wish that you 
had not done any of that. Okay, so again, when you're dealing with us, any kind of spicy sereno, jalapeno, scotch bonnet, any kind of pepper, just be very, very conscious that your cutting board now is polluted, your knife is going to have a uh, jalapeno on it. But what I like to do is I like to just take like a half a teaspoon, a measuring spoon, and I like to just dig out, right? Just dig out the seeds, okay? This all comes out just perfectly when you dig them out. And that way there's not so much touching, getting rid of that, okay? And let's get rid of that. And I have the still the little stem part. And again, this is all gonna get cut up, okay? If you're a little scared of having things hot, um, then I always say start with less, always better to have some less spiciness. Okay, so this is going in and then our rest of the things are going in. Okay, and then we're going to put this, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to put this on here. And get this going. Now, I like it a little chunky, so I don't let it go too terribly long. Um, and this is the taper, like this is what they call the taper for the Vitamix. Okay, so this comes off, okay? And oh, that cumin smells so good, oh my goodness. And this is the soup, okay, you can see, here's the soup. We're gonna put the rest of the, now that red, it, I got the red back by putting in just that little bit of beet. I'm very happy now because my disappointment earlier was, is kind of now gone. <laughs> and I'm very happy with my, my red soup. Now, the rest of the way to finish the soup off, and let's just get a big ladle out. Okay, now the soup, gazpacho always has to be as cold as possible, right? And that is looking really chunky, a little bit chunky. Again, you could make it as chunky or smooth as you want. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of fresh black pepper. Okay, and the other really special ingredient that has to go into any kind of gazpacho, whether it's a tomato or a melon, this is watermelon tomato, they make cantaloupe gazpacho. Um, there's so many kinds, is you need to have some vinegar. Okay, now in Spain, you likely would use some sherry vinegar. Um, but we're going to use red wine vinegar. And um, I wrote it out with three to four tablespoons. So let's just try three and see how that goes and taste it. Okay, so one. And you might say, well, can I use white vinegar? Well, you could, but it's going to be sharper in taste. Sherry vinegar is very delicious. I have some of that. But I think the red is really perfect, actually. So I'm just going to give this a stir. Okay, it's a little bit chunky. We're gonna taste it to make sure that it tastes good. And I always taste it again once I've chilled it because when it's really, really, very, very cold, you really want to um, taste it again to make sure how this, how does it taste when it's cold. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that it. Oh, it's. Mm, it could use. Mm, it could use one more tablespoon, okay? That's, again, it has to do with how sweet is my watermelon? You know, it has, there's a lot of different flavors going on here, right? So you wanna just definitely kind of adjust to taste, okay? Now, over on the side here, right, I have um, some very beautiful, remember earlier I said that I didn't care about how the cucumber was cut, how the onion was cut, how the pepper was cut, but here I've actually cut in very, very, very small dice, tiny, tiny onion, a uh, little bit of pepper, everything that is in the soup except for the tomato, and sometimes what I would like to do is just, I just put a little extra, so there's something chunky going on in here. Again, it all depends on how smooth, how chunky you want it, okay? Now you could add a little water if the soup is too thick. Um, water is fine, a little broth is fine. And I would always just put this in a jar and get it really very cold in the refrigerator, okay? But we're gonna serve it up for, for now. So I'm gonna get a plate 
Okay, and we're gonna just get this served up. And I'm gonna give it one more little taste test to make sure that it's as delicious as I want it to be. And I'm happy that the redness is here. And I could have put even more beet in it, actually. It would be really much darker. Mm. Okay, that is good. That is really, really good. Okay, so we're gonna just serve this up. Imagine that it's chilled, that it's been in the fridge. You could take this on a picnic, put it in a big mason jar, right? And that is that. Now, you always wanna decorate it, right? You always wanna make it just like we just did our plantains. And I have a little bit of extra things going on over here. So let's just pull these in. I'm gonna put a little bit of cucumber, pepper. I have just these extra things. It tells people what's inside, right? By putting these things on the top, okay? Uh, can you, can yes. You hold, sorry to interrupt. Can you hold the diced cucumbers up to the um, up to the yeah, camera? Yeah, sure. Yes, just to see the size of the uh, dice. Oh, it's just very, very tiny diced, as if you just very, very tiny. I mean, I would say everything's a quarter inch here, okay? And how did I do that? I'll just show you with the cucumber that I have here at the moment. Um, I'm just gonna slice a little bit of it here. Now, again, I didn't wash my knife. I'm just thinking about that with the jalapeno. I had a vision just now that every this whole cucumber is gonna taste like a spicy jalapeno, okay? But you would cut this so it's like this, right? Like, and then you're gonna cut like a matchstick, right? We're gonna learn about cutting matchsticks in a few minutes and with the jicama. And then you're just gonna make little tiny dice, right? That's all you're gonna do, okay? That's your tiny dice, okay? Um, I actually really like also, I think it's too late to do this now. Um, where do I have, I think it's too late because I've sliced into this cucumber, but you can, if you have a nice cucumber, you can take a peeler and give it a good, make a nice ribbon, right? You could do a couple of these. It's a cucumber. This is an English cucumber. Um, if, if it was still longer, it would be better. Again, if this were not as thin as it is. And then you could technically, you know, give it a little wrap around and make your little rose if you feel like trying to make a little something, little something standing up. It's always nice to have some height, right? That can go in there as decoration. Another really delicious thing is dill. Dill is fantastic on this. Um, uh, a little bit of basil would be super beautiful and super lovely. Um, what else? And of course, a slice of avocado. And we only have, I only have one avocado here. Again, I have to be very careful on my cutting board here. So until um, I wash this, but I'm, this avocado is actually for our pistachio ice cream. So I don't, I'm kind of robbing our pistachio ice cream. I only have one avocado. Right, but let's just say that this is the avocado and a little avocado can go in here as well. Not too much because we need this for our pistachio ice cream, okay? But that can go in there. And then if you had a little bit of basil and somewhere I have a little bit of basil. Um, not sure where I have it actually. I'm, oh, here it is actually. I have a little bit, just a little, little bit. And you could put that on top as, in here as a decoration, just anywhere. And that's our, that's our watermelon gazpacho, okay? But you definitely want to get it so that it's as cold as possible, okay? Is there any questions about watermelon gazpacho and what we did? It's pretty fast, right? It's a make-ahead thing, right? It it's like, it, right? Absolutely beautiful, yes. It looked very quickly, especially with the blending. Carol, can, once again, can you hold it a little closer to the camera so people can see the decoration? Yeah, sure. I have to be careful if I show it at an angle because we'll lose all the soup, right? <laughs> so again, most people know about tomato gazpacho, which is very, very common. But melon gazpacho is very common and, and um, you can make melon gazpacho. I think I made it last summer with cantaloupe. You can make a cantaloupe gazpacho. And this is a combination of tomatoes and watermelon. And it's basically, I always say gazpacho is like a cold salad, but there's nothing better on a hot, hot day than having cold gazpacho with a nice crusty piece of bread. I, I can't think of anything that is more uh, 
satisfying than eating gazpacho. And it's basically like eating a liquid salad, right? <laughs> and, yeah. um, also, there was a question, is are part of the decorations, did you make a rose that maybe I missed? I was paying um, you. Yeah, I just made a quick rose only, but I didn't, I didn't do it very successfully because I have this much cucumber, okay? I have, this is all I have. And this is very, very thin, but any kind of, you can make a rose out of an apple, you can make it out of a carrot, right? And, and, and basically you, what you want are ribbons, right? So I took a peeler and, and again, it's not gonna work so nicely now because I have so little bit here to actually get uh, the material that I need, right? It's too flat. It's too, it's not gonna happen. But I basically made ribbons. Here, I'll show you with a carrot really quickly. You're not gonna do a carrot one, but basically you need to have something that has some, can't be this thin, can't be this thin. And you got a carrot, right? And you are gonna make your ribbons, right? Your ribbons. Any of you that know that I think about carrot locks now out of carrots, right? And so you make your ribbons and then you just, you start with your finger, right? And you, you start to wrap, right? And you just start to wrap and you slowly, slowly, and you tighten it up so that the cor corners in, and you just eventually get your rose. As you build up, it gets bigger, fatter. It's really done very beautifully when you have a, um, an apple, actually. But here I'm starting with the carrot, okay? We have no carrots in the soup, so I would not put it there. But you know what, for decoration for now, we'll put it on top of our, no, I don't even like it there to tell you the truth. The carrot doesn't go with anything. So we're just gonna move it, okay? Any questions, Wendy? Is there any questions? Sorry, uh, that's it, Carol. Uh, free to move on. Okay, then I'm gonna one get rid of get this cutting board so it doesn't have jalapeno on it. That's for certain because we need to get that clean. And I'm getting my knife clean just while we're doing this for a moment. I don't know. If it's sometimes I wonder when there's no questions. What does that mean? Does it mean people are just understanding? I guess. Uh, maybe it's a good thing. I'm also cleaning out while we're doing this right this very second. I just am getting the uh, getting the vitamins clean for our next thing. We're gonna take do a uh, jicama salad next. Okay, this is all gonna dry here carefully, and we're going to get our jicama and make our salad with our oranges. Now, um, I just spoke to one of my former students who just told me she made a salad almost exactly like we're making today, only instead of jicama, she actually used pineapple. And I thought, what a great idea, you know? Um, I also make this almost exact same salad with fennel, okay? So it's kind of like you have to kind of know how to change with the seasons and also how to change your veg, how to, you know, change what vegetables you're using, right? And jicama is a root vegetable, okay? And jicama is also very starchy. It's a sweet, watery, kind of um, crunchy, uh, similar to a potato, right? We talked about the plantain being like a potato, also starch, and this is your jicama. This is actually a, I would say a medium size. I always look for the smaller ones because they're easier to deal with. This one is gonna render a lot of matchsticks and maybe we won't use it all is my thinking, okay? And there are two ways of dealing with this jicama, okay? <laughs> one is, well, first of all, you have to take the top and the bottom off. That's first and foremost, okay? So let's just do that. And the skin is really thick. Okay, so this one is really, it's really thick skin, okay? I can't explain and show that to you, but it's very tough and thick, okay? And again, where is my bowl with all the stuff that we put? Remember my plantains? Again, I always have a garbagey bowl on, okay? Now, you can do this one of two ways. You can take a peeler, which I just threw in the sink, actually. Let's just get this rinsed and dried. 
You can try to take a peeler, just like when you are having a butternut squash, you can try to peel it. Sometimes it peels easy. Sometimes it's just better to uh, peel it with a knife. So I just wanna show you that you see how thick the skin is, right? And you can peel it, okay? It can be peeled, okay? You see how easy this particular one is peeling. Just wanting you, now I better look at the banana, the plantains because they're really smelling. Oh, and they're really, really done. I knew that they were really done. Let's put that on stop and let's just see what these look like. Do you see how pretty? I didn't bother to flip them. They're dark on the, both sides. I didn't even bother to flip them. Okay, let's just put them over here to cool, okay? But that is done. The, banana, the plantains, you can now see how short of time they take. So you can peel your uh, jicama like this. Again, your, all your peels go into your garbagey bowl. Okay, or the other way is if you're not gonna use a peeler, and you have to have a very sharp peeler to do that, or you just take your knife and you go from top to bottom, right? But you end up taking a little more flesh off, okay? But you're going to literally, just like you would car carve a cantaloupe, a watermelon, a pineapple, right? You have to get all of this skin off, right? And you would just go from the top all the way down to the bottom. And you can see that I, missing some of the spots. We'll go back and we'll, and we're not gonna use this whole one because this is a much bigger one than, you need about a pound if you're shopping for your jicama to make the recipe. And it's always, you can make it with as much, you just, this is not an exacting recipe, okay? You can, you can ad lib this recipe. It's not one of those ones where you have to get all the proportions right. Okay, you have to get the citrus part right and the flavoring right, but the proportions are really up to you. Now, I love making the salad when there are blood oranges available, which is only uh, mm, December through April, actually. Uh, you don't get blood oranges now in July. Um, I can't think of anywhere in the country that you get them. They really are uh, more of a winter spring orange. Okay, so today we're gonna to use some pineapple and some, so this has all been peeled and where it's not peeled, maybe I'll just clean it up, right? Just because you don't want any of that skin. Okay, and I've taken the time just to show you all this. Okay, and all of this is just garbage. Okay, we'll just move that over there for now. Okay, now we have to attack this and it's a big one. Okay, it's kind of like dealing with a big squash. So we're gonna cut it in half and we're going to see how much we render. Okay, so the first thing is we're gonna make matchsticks. Now you could grate it, it's okay if you want to grate it, but what I'm gonna do is go the long way and I'm gonna make thin slices, okay? I'm just showing you how this is done, okay? It's really very mm, hard, okay? hard to cut sometimes. Okay, so after I have these, then what I'm gonna do, you could square things off if you want. If you want every single thing to be the same size, you could square everything off. You know, get, get these tips away. This is when you have a child in the, in, or anybody with you who's cooking with you. You say, okay, you want a snack? Here are the ends, okay? But these are, this is edible. You don't have to trim it. I'm just showing you. And I'm gonna bring my bowl closer. I do have some orange and um, grapefruit segments in this bowl, but we're just gonna to start to make these matchsticks, okay? And I'm just gonna cut and I'm just, again, I've stacked two slices on top of each other and I'm being very careful. You see, and we're just making matchsticks, okay? Can everyone see what those look like, okay? They're just gonna go in there. And I don't mind that they're this long because eventually as the salad kind of marinates, this is very crunchy. Uh, you can't hear, you can't hear it, but it's crunchy like celery, okay? So I just want you to know that it is sweet and so delicious and literally one of my favorite things to snack on. And it has a lot of good health properties. 
And um, we, a lot of people don't even know how to prepare it. So that was my point today in showing you. Again, if you wanted to trim these so it's, you don't have these little bits and squares, we'll just leave those bits there. Again, I'm just cutting two slices at a time. If you're, can, this particular jicama is a very um, a dense one. Okay, so we've got that and we'll, we'll finish this half out. Okay, so we wanna make sure that that's flat. Okay, and I'm just, again, making slices. They're about a quarter inch. Okay, and then I'm stacking these slices on top of each other and then just, um, and I don't, I'd like them to be kind of all the same size. So that's why I'm trimming them a little bit. Okay, and this is making the matchsticks. Okay, and I ate, love this salad so much. And I hope that all of you go looking for jicama because it really is something that you can find all, 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 all year long actually. And, um, it is like a potato, somewhat. And again, if you have diabetes, it's actually a low on the glycemic index and it's very sweet. So this could now go in the refrigerator, get wrapped up, can be eaten anytime. We could continue, but we don't need to continue. Okay, I've also sliced some red onions, very thin. Now, if you're one of those people that just doesn't like onions, don't use it. I've made this salad often without onions. I just think that it's nice with the sweet onion, okay? It gives it a little bit of bite, but you certainly don't have to, okay? This salad is delicious, literally, with just, you. if you wanted to eat a snack, just this and a little chili powder is your snack. You could have a bag of this in a Ziploc bag, put it in your purse, go on the run, go to the park, have a little snack with you in the car. And this with a little chili powder and a little bit of lime is di divine and very heavenly. Okay, I'm gonna just put some of my loose ends here, okay, that I didn't use that will be snacked on later. Um, I wanted to take a moment just to show you all how to segment the orange, because maybe you don't know. Uh, I also suggest in this recipe, if I remember right, because I never, uh, we need one teaspoon of zest. And that zest could either come from a lime or it could come from an orange. And I'm using that as an added and flavor, okay? Because we're not putting salt, we're gonna put some chili powder or some ancho, any kind of spicy red pepper, but we're going to use a little bit of zest. And because I've already started this, um, earlier, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the zester. And I'm gonna give about a, this is a big, big orange. And I'm gonna just put that in there. That is gonna be our flavor in a lot of ways, this zest. I never dig into any kind of orange or lemon without actually giving it a little, getting the zest. And then I, put, I actually put the zest away actually. Um, and I put it on my oatmeal in the morning. I use it for everything because it is flavor. So again, I just wanna take a moment to show you how to uh, segment, okay? Now here is another piece of food that is, it's a little dry here, but it looks really beautiful here. When I take these off, I always give it a squeeze so I don't waste that juice, okay? And then I'm going to just, Again, just like we just peeled, you're gonna peel. And again, if you had blood oranges, you could use the grapefruit. I, I did a whole uh, grapefruit earlier today. Okay, and I'm just running my knife along the, all the way around, right? And getting the peel off. You don't wanna leave any white pith because that's bitter, right? And we use most of the skin for the zest. So I don't feel like we've wasted anything. And then you look back at your orange and you say, oh, I missed a bit or two. So you just take, again, you have to have a very sharp knife to do this. Otherwise you're just hacking away and you're not gonna have a good. And here's some more white pith. You don't want any white pith. Okay, so again, this is gonna go into my bowl of putting 
collecting. This way you don't have to go into your garbage every few minutes. It's just all your stuff is going into one place. Okay, so now you have this peeled orange. You can do one of two things. You could make it fancy and really get the segments out of there without their membranes, which I think is the nicest way to do things. But sometimes in the fast, quick way, I'll just actually slice it, okay, and make nice rounds. But I did want to just show you. So you know that each segment is in there and it's sitting in between all the membranes. So you want to just cut out and then take your knife and angle it and take it out of its membrane, okay? So out, so I'm just rotating and taking the membrane out. Okay, this is like when my mother reminds me of, she used to feed me these mandarin oranges from a can when I was a kid. And suddenly I had a vision of, oh, I used to love those mandarin oranges because they didn't have any of this membrane. And I think as a kid, I think, you know, I was really fussy with the texture of things. And I think I liked those. And so this is what you're getting. You're getting these really beautiful, segments right all these without their membrane and it's very pretty and very decorative and 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 so i'm just going to finish there's a few more left when you get to the very end sometimes it's hard to get them out like here's one one that's sticking to its membrane i'm just going to actually segment it out and actually take my knife and take the membrane out like that okay and we have two more left here, two more orange slices. So this salad called for two oranges. I now have two oranges in this salad and a grapefruit, okay? And it doesn't really matter, okay? And what am I gonna do with all of this beautiful membrane? I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna squeeze. Oh, there's a lot of flavor and a lot of juice and I'm not getting rid of that. That's not going to waste, okay? And that's also gonna go in the bowl, okay? So that's what we have so far, okay? And the other thing that is gonna go in it is some cilantro. We need about a half a cup, if I am mis not mistaken. Yes, we need about a half a cup. So I'm gonna take this cilantro, it's already washed. I have a lot of juice on my cutting board. I'm just gonna actually get this juice out of here. I'm not even gonna bother to wash the cutting board because it's just got orange juice on it. And I'm gonna take this, and this is probably too much cilantro. I probably don't need all of it, but I don't think you can ever have too much cilantro, okay? And the two other key things is we're gonna need a lime, okay? So we're gonna just chop this up. It's okay, you know, you can eat the stems of, a, of the cilantro. Most people don't realize that, but if you chop them up, it's fine. They're actually a really good flavor. You just wanna make sure, just like the spinach, uh, cilantro comes very, very sandy. So you really wanna give it a really, really good washing and rinse. Okay, so this is about a half a cup. I'm not gonna measure it, I can just see. And again, it doesn't, we're, this salad doesn't need to have proportion. It just, you can see all the things that are going in there. If you had a little more cilantro, it's really, really okay. Okay, now there is the orange juice in there that you saw me squeeze, but I really like using some lime because the lime and the chili actually go very, very well together. So we're going to cut this lime in half, okay? And we're going to get our juicer. And I like doing it over the bowl here. And this is a really nice handheld uh, juicer, which I try not to squirt my eye or anything. What is great about this juicer is that it collects the seeds in the little basket. And this you could dump into your, uh, you could put it into your ice cold water. I use it to clean my pots and the cutting board with a little salt. And let's just, and we need, how much does the recipe call for? It says that it actually needs to have juice of one lime. Well, this is a big lime and it's juicy. So that's a good sign. Okay, let's keep that by the sink because that's where I end up you. And I'm just gonna pour this all over the salad. Okay, that's our citrus. We're gonna use that lemon juicer again. So we'll keep it close by. 
Now, the spice that goes on this, you need about a quarter teaspoon. And I suggested that you use ancho chili powder, but maybe you won't have ancho chili powder. So if you have just regular chili powder, you could use that. If you have um, a little, it could be, you could use a little cayenne if you didn't have any kind of chili powder. Um, I actually have some habanero chili powder, which is quite nice. It's from Fairway. And then from Rancho Gordo, I have this incredible yummy thing called chili dipping powder, which I call like fairy dust because it's called stardust. It's actually really called stardust, but I love it so much. And it's just a kind of chili powder. So I'm just, we need a quarter teaspoon. And again, it's, um, I always start small and we can always add more, okay? Um, oh, you can always add more. So I'm sprinkling that, okay? And I'm gonna just use a little bit more because I can tell that I need some more. Again, if you don't like things really spicy, pull back and then taste it and mix it. So this is what the salad is looking like at this very, very second. Everyone can see there's a lot of juice at the bottom. There's grapefruit oranges. Again, if it were winter, we could use a little bit of blood oranges too, cilantro and our jicama. And the best way to mix this, honestly, is with our hands. And my hands are very clean, but I'm just gonna wash them again. I'm obsessively wash things. We have to, we have just a few more minutes to make our very last thing. Okay, so this salad, is ready to eat just like this, this very moment, okay? And it's sitting in its marinade. Now you could eat this tomorrow and it, all the matchsticks will kind of collapse because it absorbs, it's again, like a starch and it's a potato, it is going to absorb the flavor. So the longer this marinades, the more flavor it gets, okay? So you can eat this now or you can eat it later on or you can eat it tomorrow. So let's taste it. It is so delicious. I made this amount of salad the other day. I ate it in all one day. I just want to tell you, ate the whole bowl, morning, afternoon, and night. And so I just want to tell you, there's nothing that is really fattening in here. It's actually very good for you. And I discovered during the week that it's very delicious on red rice, believe it. So if you are someone that actually has a little bit of rice, I had some red rice left over recently. So I actually saved it for today. And I thought this tastes so good over rice. I couldn't believe it. Never have done it before. The citrus tastes delicious. So I'm just gonna show you one way of serving it. <laughs> you can absolutely, you don't have to eat it over rice, but I just wanna show you, look how pretty that is, right? And what happens is a little bit of this marinade, this juice on that rice is like so flavorful that you will never ever miss all the salt and the butter or the oil that goes onto rice and into your salad. This is flavorful, refreshing, cool, and you can't get much better than this actually. So that's that. Any questions, Wendy? Because we have to move on to our very, very, very last thing. Yes, we have about 15 minutes. So um, I think we're, and then we'll do questions till 6.30. Um, but there are questions about jicama. So let me just see if I can quickly pull them up. Give me one second. Um, all right. How do you pick out the jicama to ensure its ripeness? Um, you know what? I never, I, I, you know, I don't know that answer. I don't have an answer because it's always, I just use it. It's always been, it's hard as a, it's usually hard and, and like a softball, it looks like a softball. And again, I try not to buy, sometimes they're very large and I try not to buy those. I try to buy the smaller ones if possible, which weigh about one pound. Got it. Um, and you know where, to locate it in a produce section? I mean, I'm Oh guessing. yeah, it's definitely um, right by, well, it depends to tell you the truth. I usually start looking for it by my potatoes, by the sweet potatoes, the white potatoes, you know, um, but it's definitely in the vegetable section, but it really depends on the store. But um, 
I most it just depends. It, it, but but it won't be in the refrigerator. Okay, that's one thing to tell you. It's not going to be in the refrigerated with the greens and things. It's going to be with your root vegetables. Okay, because it is a root vegetable. <laughs> So it could be near, somebody could have put it near the carrots, could put it near the, you know, possibly near the parsnips and the beets, right? It could be near the beets, but it's also could be near the potatoes. <laughs> Got it, okay. Good. And then some stores like could say, oh, let's put it near the mangoes because these are kind of like Mexican foods. <laughs> and, and it would not surprise me if they were in a section of Mexican things right because of the way the store sets up and they want to have like all kind of ethnic foods together right <laughs> it's kind of like tofu where do you find the tofu in the store sometimes right different places <laughs> exactly and we've both run into that um and then finally can you cook the jicama i'm i'm fairly certain i've had it cooked so i have never cooked it but i don't i'm sure you can it's kind of It'd be kind of like cooking a radish is what I'm guessing, right? People cook radishes all the time, you know, and they're very delicious when they're cooked. What I, I love in the spring, especially when radishes, and I think you could cook a jicama. I, I've never done it, Wendy, but I don't see why not. Excellent. And um, if you do cook it, where or how, what kinds of flavors might you use with the jicama? With well, I think always, always, always the chili powder, any kind of it, it, think about it absorbent, right? It's, it's a, it's a starchy vegetable that is a little bit sweet, a little bit watery, and it absorbs flavor, right? So, I mean, I, I, I don't think I would put curry with it, but you could put some curry with it. <laughs> um, I think it probably would just absorb the curry. The most no, most common way is a variety of chili powders, <laughs> um, and that could be the ancho, the habanero. The there's so many kinds of chili powders that I just uh, that's what I would recommend. Beautiful. Okay, we're ready to move. must make the most delicious gelato. Um, I have been wanting to show this recipe to people for so very long, and. And we have Dr. Furman's book to be thankful for. Otherwise, I would have never found this recipe. It comes out of this magazine that's called 100 Best Foods for Health and Longevity. It is a wonderful, it is a magazine, not a, not a it's a book, but it's a magazine style. And he actually goes over and he talks all about each vegetable and what makes it so special. And then he always has a little thing at the bottom called, did you know this? Did you know this? And it's all alphabetical, so it's quite useful. And in here is the our pistachio uh, gelato. And why am I so excited about this? Well, when I became a vegan and I gave up dairy and I gave up real ice cream, right? The thing that I could, yes, everybody, let's go of something, pizza. The one thing that I couldn't imagine was letting go of pistachio ice cream because I think it was my very favorite thing in the world. And when I found this recipe and tasted it, I thought, oh my goodness, I have gone to heaven. So I'm wanting to show you this recipe for a long time and how perfect is it to do this uh, in the middle of summer when everyone still has, and it is decadent. It is not like our nice cream that we have made numerous times on this in these demos or that you are familiar when nice cream is made with frozen bananas and some other kind of frozen fruit this is decadent gelato okay i would say you don't want to eat a lot of it because it is a little bit as our friend uh sharon would say it's a little bit like crack right so you have to be careful you have to be careful okay but why not be decadent once in a while, right? Like we're all the time eating so healthy. And what does this have in it? I am sitting here chopping right now. We need three fourths cup of pistachios. So I have a half a cup of here, here, okay? And the rest of these, one fourth of a cup, they tell us to leave behind as decoration, okay? So I'm just chopping these while I'm talking to you. 
And every single thing is just gonna go right into the, into the vitamins, okay? And we have to get the mango out. We can't forget, all, we cannot forget all the ingredients. Okay, I'm gonna get this dry. Okay, so we're gonna get our half a cup of nuts in here. Okay, and let's just read the recipe instead of me memorizing the recipe because it would be very helpful if we, okay, so we had three fourths cup nuts and a quarter cup is sitting here on my cutting board. So we put a half a cup inside, okay? And then we're going to have two cups of water. Now I've already measured out this two cups of water and it's right here, okay? So we're putting that in right this very minute, two cups of water. Okay, the next thing that goes in there is a half a cup of cashews, which I have to get out. And I also have to get out the um, frozen mangoes. So let's just get those things out right away. I have a bag of very frozen mangoes and I have some cashews, which are right here in my closet. Oh, I'm gonna use these. You know what? I have these little cashews that I've been getting in a bag and they're actually the pieces. <laughs> and I've been using these for baking because why buy the whole ones when they're so expensive? So we need to have a half a cup of cashews. And remember, didn't I tell you this was going to be rich, right? We have the pistachios. We already, and we're gonna have a half a cup of cashews. So this is our very, very, very uh, rich and decadent. We don't need those cashews any longer. Okay, and then we're gonna need the mangoes. And you want to use, you could use fresh mango, but what's really good is that these are frozen and you wanna get something that's really very, very cold in here. So we need to have a cup and a half of mangoes. So I'm gonna just get the measuring cup here. We're gonna move that to the side. And this is kind of arbitrary because this is gonna all be very frozen and how it's gonna fit in here is just a matter of measuring. It's just, you kind of have to just estimate, right? What is gonna be my, you don't, I'm just filling this up. And I think that's good. We're gonna put these right back into the freezer. Okay, so the mango is gonna go in there. Okay. And then we have other really crazy ingredients in the same exact thing. Guess what we have? Spinach. Ah, spinach, <laughs> nothing like spinach going into your, into your gelato. And he says to use a handful. And what does that mean? Your handful is gonna be different than my handful. But I say that this is probably almost a cup if we wanted to try to measure it out for those of you that are really like, don't wanna know what a handful because your hand might be so much bigger than mine, but here's a cup, okay? So I'm gonna tell you it's a cup, okay? That's going in. Okay, what else is going into this crazy, crazy gelato? Well, we have to put in some uh, dates. We need a sweetener, right? So uh, it says you could use 16 uh, regular dates. And when they say regular dates, they mean like deadlit nor dates. I actually am using medjool dates. I've taken the pits out. I'm just double checking. I have eight of them because the recipe calls for eight. And if you wanna cut back on the sweetness, use six, okay? But I know this recipe pretty well and I have I know how sweet these dates are. And these are not terribly sweet dates because they're, the, they're, not, they're not the ones I normally have and they're not terribly sweet. They're sweet, but not terribly sweet. So two, so these are all going in here. Okay, we're getting all of this in here. And then it calls for, what else? Mango, so we did our water, our cashews. Ah, tofu, how about that? Tofu, and we're doing spinach. So it calls for two thirds cup of silken tofu. And the tofu that you wanna use is the really soft silken tofu. Um, and I've been buying this brand lately. Wendy can provide the link and I'm gonna just try to show it to you, not upside down. But this is a brand that makes very nice, um, silken tofu and it comes as extra firm, firm, just like all the different kinds, but it's a very soft tofu. And this tofu is often found in 
your Asian section of the grocery store. Sometimes it's in the refrigerator, but this tofu is not refrigerated normally. So its brand is called Mori New, M-O-R-I hyphen N-U, okay? And it has a little bit of, of water, like all tofu, and I drain that out and I measured two thirds cup, okay? So you can see my machine is getting really full. Okay, and what else do we need? We need to have one fourth teaspoon of, of almond uh, extract, okay? And those of you that don't have almond extract, just use vanilla. And then it says that we need either a half a large avocado or a very small one. And I've been getting these really nice, teeny, teeny little avocados. And you as you saw at the beginning of the, when we were making the gazpacho, I already robbed a little bit of it, just for our garnish. So this is a little one. So I'm just gonna put, a, put I'm gonna take the seed out of this other half, okay? And we're gonna get this. Now my, you can see how full this is, but I think we're gonna be okay. Now, would you believe that this, just sitting here, just, smelling all of this is already smells like the pistachio gelato already. I've not done anything, but somehow just all that smell smells so fantastic. Okay, so we've got a lot, it's very full. And I'm just gonna make sure we haven't forgotten anything. We did our pistachios, water, cashews, tofu. We did our dates, our mangoes. Okay, we've got it all, avocado, spinach, and a little almond extract, okay? Almond extract is a, another thing, just like I told you the cumin seed. It's something, yes, it's an extra thing that you have in your pantry, but it's really a nice thing to have. It's very special. There is no substitute, just like there's no substitute for cumin seed, there is no substitute for very yummy um, almond extract. Okay, so this is going in. It's very full. I'm gonna put the lid on. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on very tight and we're gonna use our tamper to get it all mixed up, okay? It's gonna be noisy for just one minute and I'm not gonna to talk to you, okay? Let's check it out, okay? Let's just see what's going on in here. Now this is gonna have to be frozen before we go eating it. Now, one of the things I really like, I don't know if I showed you this tip before, but I really like when I take this kind of thing off, I actually like putting it in some kind of jar, right? Let's get rid of this. I like putting it up like this. Otherwise it immediately rolls all over the counter. So I take the tamper and the lid, and instead of it rolling all over, I just find a little jar to put it in, okay? I think it needs a little bit more blending, but I just wanted to show it to you very quickly. Um, this is what it's looking like. Um, it's, it's loose at the moment, it's not frozen, okay? We could taste it, definitely taste it, of course. Mm. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It is delicious, delicious, delicious. And it really tastes like pistachio ice cream. The kind of you know if you ever ate dairy pistachio ice cream. I want it to be a little more smooth. So I'm gonna just go back and blend it for another minute. Okay, gonna take that tamper, put everything back together here. Okay, get this really close. Okay, 
So most of you who have ever had any kind of nice cream know that you can eat it right away because the bananas were frozen and your fruit was frozen. But the only frozen thing we had here was the mangoes, right? So this really does need to chill and get cold in the freezer. And the recipe says if you could put it in an ice cream maker if you want, but I actually don't bother even with an ice cream maker. And we're just gonna, again, get this situated. I actually like to put it into these little cups and I'll just show you very quickly here that I like to put it in these Tovalo cups and you can buy these. This was actually holds ice cream. It's froze their cups. This is one quart and these are little tiny six ounce cups. Okay. And they come with these really beautiful lids. So what we're going to do is, I think I'm gonna pour some of it into these smaller cups. Let's just get everything out, right? And again, this is not frozen yet, but it's gonna to have to chill in the freezer and you don't wanna get it so that it's totally frozen as a rock. You just wanna get it chilled, okay? So I'm just putting this in here like this. You can see that it makes a lot, okay? is very rich and very, very decadent dessert. Okay, we're not, and then I'm going to put these little bit of nuts on top for when we take it out of the freezer. Again, if you put it in the freezer and you eat it tomorrow, or you know, it gets frozen and it's hard as a rock, then you need to just take it out of the freezer like 10 or 15 minutes ahead of time. Okay, so, cause it's gonna either, it's gonna get hard and you're not gonna be able to eat it so it kind of has to get so that it's frozen, but somewhat soft, okay? And the rest of it, I'm just gonna pour into here, okay? You can see it's green, very, very delicious, very rich, rich because it has fat, it has cashews, it has uh, avocado, right? It has the sweetness of the dates. It has the nice smoothness of the avocado and the silkiness of the tofu. And it has, the, of course, the main ingredient is the pistachios. And that's going to go in there. And when it comes out, let's pretend it was frozen. I would definitely serve it with nice little piece of mint if it were already frozen. And I would just put that on top like that. And that would be our um, ice cream. They are gelato actually. And then this has lids. It can all go in the freezer. I would put these lids on and it's probably ready in 10 or 15 minutes. So everything here is our cold summer. We'll have one more class um, to finish out our summer. And I'm trying to keep things cool because I know it's hot all over the country. And if you don't have to turn your oven on, of course we did turn our oven on for a few minutes for our baked plantains. I wanna just show you again how pretty these plantains are that we cooked while we were in class, right? They're on parchment. They look, they, there's no oil and they're oozing of sugar and delicious. And you could eat this on top of any kind of nice cream. Plantains would be delicious, baked plantains on top of any kind of nice cream, okay? So Wendy, that is our class for today. If there are questions, I'm here to answer. I've got food all over the place here. And I'll try to do a little cleanup so that we can actually see everything. It looks absolutely delicious, Carol. And there are in fact questions. Um, can kale be used instead of spinach? Um, possibly, I've not done it. I've not done it, but I don't see why not. You could try it, right? I mean, probably, I think it could work. Would you use- um... It's just the kale is a little, um, yeah, I think it would work actually. I think it would be fine. Would you use romaine also? And are you using it, the spinach for color and texture or just color? It's not my recipe, so I did not make this up. This is Dr. Fer a, a recipe that comes from Dr. Furman's magazine, which I'm sure is you know produced by some other chef that I don't know who it is. <laughs> um, so, so I'm sure that they use spinach for color, I'm guessing, vitamins, because 
you know, it's a Dr. Furman recipe. So he's going to make sure that you get every nutrient that you, you know, he's going to put a punch of make sure that it has every single thing you need in it. And I think that you could substitute the spinach for the kale. And I, yeah, I think you could. Right. And for the um, one who is asking, I do sometimes, well, if I don't have spinach, I will use romaine, which is very, very mild. Um, and yeah, I don't know about the romaine probably has a lot of water in it is what I'm guessing. And compared to a spinach or, a, you know, I almost would say I would use a green vegetable, chard, kale, spinach over lettuce, you know, <laughs> lettuce has a lot of water in it. So, and I don't, and our green is coming from our avocado here, from our ground pistachios, and definitely the spinach, you know, <laughs> and right. probably would have more of a nutrient dense using the kale than the spinach, because spinach is kind of low on the totem pole as far as <laughs> greens, <laughs> right? It's, it's good to eat the spinach, right? It's, it was my entrance into greens. When I didn't love greens so much, I ate a ton of spinach and I still eat spinach, but if you want more nutrients, you go for the kale. <laughs> Correct, good, excellent. And then um, you didn't necessarily mention Jaffa or Yaffa dates, but do you know how Yaffa dates or Jaffa dates compare to Medjool? Are they the same? I, I, you know, there are so many kinds of dates, Wendy, I can't even begin to comment. <laughs> uh, I, every, I mean, there are, there's a, an amazing, where I get my dates um, in Southern California at a place called Shields. If you go to their website, um, there are hundreds of kinds of dates. There are dates that taste like caramel. There are dates that, you know, there are so many that I don't, I can't comment on the Yapa because I don't know that particular, but all I know is every date has its own distinct flavor. <laughs> and, and I also know that all medjool dates are not the same. <laughs> if you, I've gotten medjool dates at the fairway that I've been disappointed at. <laughs> they have, they, they dry or hard. I've gotten dates at the fairway that are delicious, right? So it, 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 it's no different than any other kind of fruit, right? You don't know sometimes. And the ones that I buy, directly from the date farm are just the most sweet that I have to tend to cut back on the dates that I use when I use those dates because they are sweet and soft and pliable and mushable and they, they don't need, they're not hard. They're not, so every date is different. So okay. that's my comment on your question. <laughs> Well, well answered. And um, I think that's it on the question. So I'm going to move to um, the announcements. Just so you know, Carol, you're getting a lot of thank yous and can't wait to try these recipes and the food looks like you could just taste it right through the screen. <laughs> a lot of thank you, thank you, thank you and, and um, excitement about trying all of these. So um, all saying that it looks delicious. Um, for those of you who are still with us, um, we, I do have some announcements for you. Um, upcoming at Plant Powered Metro New York, we have a four-part series, which I highly recommend. It's called Food for Life, and it's being co-sponsored with the Marlene Meyerson JCC Manhattan. And it'll be four Wednesdays, uh, starting this coming Wednesday, July 14th, from noon until 2. And I put our um, events page on the in the chat so you can sign up at our events page. Um, and the Food for Life program is a program that's um, very prestigious and well well attended and well respected. Uh, that's offered from the Physicians Committee of Responsible Medicine. So it'll be there. And Carol, our beloved chef Carol, actually teaches some of the Food for Life classes. But in this case, um, Carol won't be teaching. It'll be another Food for Life instructor. And uh, if you know somebody who's um, looking to advance this kind of power, um, eating or a newcomer, this is a perfect series um, for that. Um, and then you've also seen in the chat an announcement about our in-person live trip to Ron Weiss's Ethos Farm. That'll be this coming Friday, July 16th. And there are just a few spots left. So, um, we're only holding registration open for a really short time, a little while longer. 
So if you're interested, please sign up right away. And if you need a slide, um, then please let, um, they'll, I think you can let Leona know, or um, I think there'll be a link to the to a form that you might fill out that you can uh, let somebody know if you need a ride, if you're coming, let's say from New York. And then finally, a couple of you asked about Carol's replays. They are available on the Plant Powered Metro New York YouTube channel. And I put that in. And then one thing I think I'd like to call your attention to is about a month ago, we did a um, men's health event that's also on the Plant Powered page. And it's really exceptional. It was put someone on our cooking show team, Jim Spellos, and um, highly recommend you go back for yourselves or for the men in your, your life or the men who are here. So all that said, the next demo with Chef Carol will be Sunday, August 15th. And uh, an important announcement on the next demo, you will receive an email um, just like you always do. As soon as you register, you will receive an email with the link but next time we're moving to a different um, streaming platform and we will be streaming on Facebook and on YouTube and it will not be Zoom. Um, there's no need to get worried or upset or anything about it because you <laughs> send a link and uh, just click that link as you do and you'll be taken to either Facebook or to YouTube. And the recipes will also be sent in the email that goes out with the link. So um, just know next time it's not Zoom, it's a um, different platform and we're on Facebook and YouTube, same time, five to 6.30 on August 15th. And finally, questions for Chef Carol. Carol can be reached at Carol, spelled with an E, um, at theveggievanguard.com. I realized I haven't put that in the chat, so let me do that now. And she's also posts often and beautifully on Instagram at the Veggie Vanguard. So let me just quickly add that to the chat. Um, I know some of you are already um, indicating that um, Zoom is preferable, but um, for a number of reasons, we're, we're switching. So don't worry about it. You'll still be sent a link. Um, okay, that's it for today. One minute over at 6.30. <laughs> But Carol, remarkable job. Thank you. It all looks so delicious. Um, and many, many kudos uh, that have come all through. Oh, quick question on how do you get the recipe? Um, the recipe should have been sent in the email that uh, you received when you registered. Let me quickly see. Oh, quick yes. question for you, Carol. When the package of dates are open, do you store them in the refrigerator? Actually, you know, I get a big five pound box <laughs> when, <laughs> when, I get a, when I get my dates because I bake a lot and I actually put them all in the freezer. I, I put them in little small bags and I portion them out in the freezer. Um, but you can definitely keep them in your pantry. They're fine in your pantry in an airtight container. Um, I just get so many at one time and, and um, so that I don't eat them, uh, you know, I put them in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> and they stay fresh and I also get a lot of them and um, yeah and I want to just say thank you to everybody that came it's impossible the classes are, our demos are getting larger I want to recognize each one of you impossible to do I have my you know all of you are my favorites I, I am very very proud of several of our food for life students that were participants that are on a whole food plant-based journey from taking our food for life classes you know and they have become special people in my heart <laughs> um, they are on their own journey which they are sticking to I stay in touch with them they're here today I know because they said they'd be here and I want to again just acknowledge all of you my close friends and everyone that's come here for the first time we greatly appreciate our uh we here at Plant Power Metro are about empowering people in eating a whole food plant-based diet. And, and we are so happy that you've joined us. We will see you in August. Don't worry about the new platform. If you can go onto Facebook or you can go onto the internet, it's going to be live and it's going to be great. And we're only moving it so that it will be even better. So thank you again, all of you, the behind the scenes tech, David and Jim and Wendy, as always, 
thank you for answering all the questions and we will see you next time.